Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to install Ubuntu 12.04 to be able to dual boot it with Windows 8, Windows 7 or even Windows XP. So to download Ubuntu, just open up your internet browser and with Google or Bing you can just type in Ubuntu download. Actually I'll make it simple, I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'm a few days early doing this, so all we've got available at the moment is Ubuntu 11.10 but from next week onwards it will show 12.04 as the latest version. Now you've got a choice here of 32-bit or 64-bit. Now they recommend the 32-bit, however I don't. I would recommend the 64-bit nowadays. So if you've got a single core CPU then you're going to need the 32-bit or if you've got an older netbook they're only going to be 32-bit compatible. For everything else nowadays you should just go with the 64-bit now 64-bit is faster and well, the other advantages it has is being able to address more than 3 gig of RAM and more than 2 terabytes of hard drive space. So that's it. once you've chosen which one you're going to go for then just click the start download. There are a few alternative options on the downloads. I'll just cover those briefly. So you've got an alternate which is a text-based installer that's useful if you've had problems with the graphical installer working. If for some, there's something on your system that's not allowing it to work properly, that could be a good one to try and it might work with that. Yeah, it's also useful if you're setting up a RAID array because the standard graphical installer doesn't have any options for setting up RAID. The text-based one does though. If you've got fast internet connection, you could go for the BitTorrent download. It might be faster than the standard HTTP download. Uh, there's a Windows-based Wubi installer. Uh, Wubi is just more of a testing environment, just to see, well, more like if you like the style of Ubuntu. It's not really for running a full system in for any length of time. And we'll even have some DVD downloads. But for the most part, the standard graphical installer with a CD size download is absolutely fine. Now, they even have got a few instructions here on showing you how to burn a CD or create a, ball, create a bootable USB stick. CD is going to be simple enough. Well, just open up Windows Explorer, find the ISO file that you just downloaded, I think it was it right click on it and choose to burn to CD. Now you've got the other option here of creating a USB memory stick. That's pretty more useful. If you're probably more likely to have a spare USB drive than you are at blank CDs now. So they're recommending a program here called Pendrive Linux. And you've got a download for it here. There's a few instructions on how to use it. But my preference is Unit Bootin. I'll show you it briefly here. So what you need to do is choose the disk image you just downloaded. And pop in a USB memory stick and you can choose it from that drop down list there. Then just click OK and it writes it to the USB drive and makes it bootable. So when you've done that, just pop in the CD or the USB memory stick that you've created and then reboot your computer. Now when your computer first boots up, you get the BIOS screen at the beginning. It will mention on there which key you need to press to choose which drive to boot from. Now for most cases it's probably going to be something like F2, F8, F10 or Delete button. But if you just take a look at the screen, it will tell you down the bottom or it will tell you somewhere on the screen. So just press that button and then choose to boot off either that CD or USB memory stick. So when you've done that, what you'll see, I'll show you it in virtual box. So we're just waiting for it to boot up here. Uh, it takes a little while. So we've got a choice of either trying Ubuntu or installing it. I could go for trying it first. So that's going to run the operating system in memory off either the CD or USB memory stick. And you get a good feel here of whether you like the Unity desktop environment and you can find out if your network is going to work correctly. Now I'm just connected by the wired connection. If that's simple enough and clicking on the connection information there shows me that it's connected. You can have a look around on Firefox here, have a look around on the internet. So I've got the Google page. There is quite a lot you can do on here, so well, you can even look around at what software is available, 
try out LibreOffice. So if you decide you like what you see in Ubuntu, you can double click on the install Ubuntu 12.04 LTS. If you don't like it, you can click the shutdown button over here, shut down your computer, take out the CD or USB memory stick and you can reboot back into Windows. Nothing will have been installed onto your computer. So preparing to install Ubuntu. So for best results, we should ensure we have at least four and a half gig available drive space. Check. We are connected to the internet. Check. Now download updates while installing. I don't tend to do that, but you should go for this option here for installing third party software. So that will install the MP3 audio decoder and MP4 video decoder, as well as a few other bits like Flash, for playing YouTube videos. So click continue. Right, it has recognised that this computer currently has Windows 8 on it, so what would I like to do? I'm showing you here how to dual boot with Windows 8, so we're going to go with the option here to install it alongside. Alternatively, you could decide that you don't want Windows anymore, so you could just replace it, or you could go for something else. Now, if you don't have the option to install alongside, what you could try is if you go back into Windows and run a check disk because it might have some errors on the hard drive that needs sorting out before you can install Ubuntu. If it really doesn't work then you have to go for the something else option and I've done a video on that which will be a link to in the description. Now I can allocate drive space by dragging the divider below so that's quite nice and easy. So how much drive space should we give each operating system? Well Ubuntu is going to need probably at least 10 gig drive space, but you're not going to be able to do a lot with that. So, 20 more like at an absolute minimum, but I'm going to go for, uh, let's go for 70 gig for Ubuntu and 140 gig for Windows 8. Okay, so once you've decided, just click the install now button. Okay, we'll just click continue for there. It could take a little while to resize. Probably won't. Now we've got to go through a few configurations for Ubuntu. So firstly, where am I? Yes, I'm in the UK. Near London. I'm not quite in London though. A good few miles away from it. Now I've got to install a keyboard layout. So we're going to go for English UK. And yes, English UK. If you're not sure, you could go for the detect keyboard layout and we could check here whether we've got the keyboard layout working properly. Yes, we have. So, continue. My name. You can just either go with your first name, your full name or nickname. So I'm going to go for a nickname. The computer's name, call it what you want. So we could call it a, I'm just going to call this testing. Got username. Now we've got an administration password here. So something like that, weak password, that's just all lowercase. If you want to make it more complex, you can put some numbers, or you can put some symbols in, I don't know, like the full stop, greater than sign. Basically you want to go for a reasonable length because you want to be able to prevent someone from doing a an easy brute force crack on your password. That means going for something that's not in the dictionary. Right, I'm going for weak password because I don't care, this is just a testing system. Now we could go for login automatically, require my password to log in and even encrypt in my home folder. Because it's only going to be me logging on here, I'm going to go for login automatically. So we'll continue. We can import data from Windows. I don't have anything there so I'm just going to skip that. We'll go continue. Now we've got this small presentation here about some more features in Ubuntu. So you can scroll through that. Shows you how to get even more software. That's the Ubuntu Software Center, it's very useful. Have fun with your photos. Your own personal cloud, the Ubuntu One file storage for very simple online synchronization of your files. Very handy if you're using multiple computers. Take your music with you. So got a music player and the Ubuntu One music store. We can purchase albums and they're automatically downloaded into your music collection. Yeah, stay connected. Social networking. Browse the web. So by default it comes with Firefox. 
write and present for free. It comes with LibreOffice, which is compatible with Microsoft Office right up to 2010. Some customizations you can do in Ubuntu. I'll go into more detail on that in future videos. If you've got any questions, you can check out Ask Ubuntu. Now, I like this new feature here. You get an automatic Twitter feed from what people are talking about with Ubuntu. So that's a pretty cool feature there. Okay, well, the install is finished, so we can just click the Restart Now button. Remove the installation media. Yep, done that. When your computer boots back up, you'll see this grub, the operating system selection screen. Now this is very ugly, and but there are a few ways of customising that. There'll be a link to a video for that in the description below. Just waiting for it to boot up. The first boot will be a bit slower than it will, will be normally. But there we are, it has booted up. So that is how you install Ubuntu 12.04 to be able to dual boot alongside Windows. Probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is to be able to install the additional drivers. I'm just going to show you that briefly. So I just opened the Unity launcher, started typing additional, and it goes for searching for available drivers. So this will give you your graphics card drivers and possibly even the wireless network drivers, and maybe a few other things depending on the hardware that you have in your system. I've only got one thing there, that's just for the virtual box. Don't worry if it doesn't have anything in that list probably means that everything in your system is compatible. There we are, that's it. So thanks for watching, see you later.